we're doing upgrades. HP Z840, looking at our All Master 5.25 to 3.5 SSD hard drive bay on your right. On the left, we've got the StarTech USB 3.0. So, having a closer look at the StarTech. Now, if only we could focus. Yeah, that's better. USB 3.0, super speed. Absolutely incredible add on for any of your HP HP workstations, uh, absolutely including the 800 and the 820 as well. Okay, so full breakdown. Let's see if we can figure out exactly how to install one of these. First thing, you have to pop the cover. I like dramatic music to spice up your computer modification. Okay, time to get serious. So first things first, there's a little green tab there. We can lift that to release the bays. In this case, no screws required. And slightly better angle going to the other view here. Once you've removed those, you are able to access that area for modification. Now you will notice a random drive floating around. That was my old uh, boot system. Not currently connected because I've switched on VME just recently. Okay, so those are some of the uh, bays there. The holders themselves come in different shapes and designs. This particular one has the cutouts there. I guess that's mainly for airflow. Now, uh, had another SSD in here. This one is connected. Good old Samsung. Uh, this will be a, I recall, a 950, uh, sorry, 850 or a 860, but either way, these are incredibly good SSD drives, really quick file transfer, ideal maybe for a quick transfer of a video file. Okay, so that was a super blurry, can't tell. I think it was an 850 Evo. My memory lets me down there. You'll see the specs later. Okay, moving on to our next important step. So definitely a bit dusty on the CPU coolers there. We'll go back to that. So handheld cam, bit of action. You notice a DVD player up there as well. And there's our USB panel. So now let's see if we can get this installed so next part I had to fish it out of my other server computer but it's the Allmaster very handy drive bay here you can fit any number of things I had a hard drive fitted there just a one terabyte red NAS drive but right now we can proceed to remove it and truth be told the uh, camera played a bit of a trick on me here we will do a bit of a time skip as we proceed through but very simple we have mounting screws now these screws are actually pinched off the uh, HBZ 420 they're pretty well equipped in the uh, hard drive area there are some provided spare screws I've actually taken them from that one uh, these screws very very handy they just take standard hard drive screws and there it is the Olma ah yes Safety first, I'm sure you guys got nervous when I was undoing those bolts. Or screws, rather. Just refocus that ever so slightly there. So, first thing would be to install those SSDs. Now, equipment here was a bit of a problem. I actually had to remove them after testing this because you cannot have screws within uh, the outer dimensions of your little case here, they don't actually fit into this model, they work fine in the Z420. So you do have to make sure that you uh, mount these from the inside of this particular case. There are screw holes there, we'll have a look at them shortly. In this case, using a power drill. You want to make sure that it threads in before you do that, but very easy. They do provide you some power when it comes to quick PC upgrades. Okay, so very tough on these. You do have to proc the SSD up a little bit. Make sure you get your screw threaded first. Then you can use the power tool. 
you do it the other way, you will destroy it and make sure the power tool is variable. You don't want to set it on max power, it will destroy pretty much anything you point it at. So pretty easy there, very low setting, doesn't really talk them, just sets them at the perfect amount of tension. Now somewhere around here is where my camera cut out. But the joys of video editing, you guys see the final product, which is this. Now, very straightforward. I recall maybe something like 10 screws, give or take. Try to do all the ones that were relevant. Now we'll just test them. Most of these are done with the power tool, so it is nice to go back. Just make sure there's adequate tension there. Slight little force there. That is a magnetic screwdriver, which is incredibly useful. Highly recommend it. It's almost impossible to do this without a magnetic screwdriver. And going down to the last one there, didn't quite make it, but they're all pretty well set. Uh, for the SSDs there, had to go from the inside, as I mentioned, they didn't quite clear the case doing it the other way around. You can see them nicely there. So really, really well designed. Now, with the old master, there were some different options when I picked these up. I got these off eBay. I'll try and put a link in the description. But the best one to go for would be the one with the groove at the front. Okay, well that was easy. Installation. So next part will be to try and do a test fit. You want to put your USB cable through first. And I'll show you the magic for getting that to work. You can get an internal USB uh, connection. It does require USB 3.0 for this to be effective. There is a spare header on the Z840. So it actually would be possible. Notice the green lever there, or the black with the green, just to secure the bay in place. So I've fed the USB cable down and I'm going to insert a USB 3.0, or technically a USB 3.1 USB adapter here. This is also from StarTech. Uh, very, very well designed. I've had trouble with some of these, especially some of the cheaper ones on eBay. They don't work, or at least they haven't worked for me. Uh, temperamental, not always able to do what you want them to do. Uh, this one's worked really well. Able to run things like 4K cameras. Uh, if you have something like a Cam Link or maybe a Brio 4K camera, those fit into that and they do function perfectly, which is good. No laggy or streakiness. So we've got the SAS ports down the bottom there. Quick inspection before we launch in. There's our culprit. You'll notice a little plastic sleeve actually protecting the motherboard from your uh, PCIe brackets. So very tough to see there, but you can kind of see the sparkly effect there. That is there to protect when you're inserting your card so you don't damage any transistors and so forth. So sorry, place within at least, that's good. Transition shortly, there we are. So you just want to align these into your divided slot. And then it's just a very gentle nudge, making sure the bracket itself is aligned on the far left. It does take a little bit of a, a push, then they should slide in perfectly. You just want to make sure it's all aligned. So now we've got our USB 3.1. See the USB C's down the bottom there. Now I've chosen this particular outlet here. I believe it's probably more designed for SAS connections, uh, maybe eSATA even, but for my application, it should work fine. The machine's pretty well sheltered, so not worried about the cable. And that's going to do it for me. So that converts our USB 3 into a USB 3.1, and then feeding it into the PCIe uh, four times lane there. So this particular card does require a power connector. So a little messy, forgive me, but that was the only way that I could get any power fed through. So definitely pushing the limits here. The Z is only supplied with the 6-pin connectors for the GPU. Okay, and there it is. That does give us a total of 8 USB 3.0 connections on our front panel. Incredibly useful. Especially when you're trying to run some extra accessories. I find you always run out. You could go with maybe a media dongle or anything else uh, to try and get more USB ports, but that is a really easy upgrade. I highly recommend you guys consider it. And remember this will work on a HPZ 820 as well as the 800. 
So lots of options there to upgrade and get a few more USB ports. So we'll transition to the rear here and just have a look at the final product. And that gives us some extra USB 3.1 port. So very useful, maybe for something like Cam Link. Very, very powerful. And a little messy with the odd cable coming out. You could cable tie it a little bit, but not too worried about that. The machine just sits in a server rack for the most of its life. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Well done. We made it through another one. Stay tuned. I'll try and get out a few more of these.